Good morning, everybody. Uh, so just going to talk about what we're going to get into today. Uh, I'm going to do a brief int introduction about myself, kind of my background, what my interest is, kind of my passion about continuous integration and continuous delivery deployment. Uh, I want to mention the session right after me goes into a lot more detail that Karuna was sitting right there, is going to go into more detail on our continuous infra uh, environment setup. Um, and give a little bit more of the kind of uh, details on how it's, it's set up and how it works. Um, I kind of wanted to originally do this presentation just focused on our, what we're doing, but I kind of wanted to give a little bit more info on the landscape. So I kind of wanted to talk about the evolution of what the platform is today, how it's evolved, where it started, and, and well, you know, understanding that. And then the evolution of how DevOps and how its landscape has changed considerably. I would say in the last five to ten years. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the DevOps infrastructure components and tools that we're using um, and, and how uh, this, this relates and the, uh, how to integrate your GitHub or your project with our uh, DevOps infrastructure. Um, and then I'm going to do a, a brief demo of the pipeline. I did unfortunately record. I did not want to tempt the demo gods or the, or the conference Wi-Fi or, or, or network. So I, 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 I can show some live stuff, but I recorded most of everything. I'm just going to talk through that demo. Um, and then I'm going to talk about kind of what the future of DevOps infrastructure and CI CD, kind of where, where it's headed, some of the new innovations that are happening in the space, um, mostly around OpenShift and Kubernetes. So spoiler alert, we're going to be talking a lot about OpenShift and Kubernetes. Um, so my name is Ari Lavigny. I'm a senior principal software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I, I'm in the system engineering organization, and I'm, and I'm on a continuous productization team. So what that means is that you know, we're focused on how we can release our products with, uh, more efficiently, uh, you know, qu quicker, quicker to the release, and also with less bugs. And how do we enable that process? So um, we've, we're working on a lot of things internally, like a service to help enable that so users don't have to um, have to figure that, or developers and QE folks don't have to figure that out themselves. Um, and you know, my at the end of the day, like my passion really is continuous integration, continuous delivery, and the overall DevOps umbrella that that, that encompasses that. Again, don't forget to go to Kronos talk after mine too. Just wanted to mention that again. Um, so the evolution of the platform landscape. So. You know, everything kind of started, the platform was, you know, you install your OS on a bare metal machine way back when, right? We all had, we all did that. Um, and then that kind of went to the virtualization stack. So um, there's, with all these different pieces, right, we just had machines and there was kind of no consistency between them. You know, you, you can have a, a bare metal machine or VM and you can, you can, uh, you know, set up your, your dependencies and, and uh, install everything that you need to do, but it, it's not very repeatable or, or consistent. Um, then, you know, obviously you could use configuration management to do some of those things that helped out there considerably. And then we go into the cloud where now you could get your VMs and all your components via any of these clouds, and I'm sure there's ones that I've left off, but these are some of examples of what exists today. Um, to me, really, the evolution of of where we've come to is Kubernetes and, and uh, OpenShift in particular, which is kind of Red Hat's spin on Kubernetes or their, their distribution of, of a Kubernetes cluster and install. Um, you know, kind of the history here is of how it's grown and how fast it's grown is um, the first DockerCon was in 2014. Um, the first KubeCon was actually two years ago. Um, there was 1,000 people there. The KubeCon this year that I went to in Seattle, there was eight times as many people there. So think about that for a second of where it started and also the original projects that were part of the Kubernetes umbrella were these three. Uh, Kubernetes, obviously, uh, Prometheus, and uh, FluentD. Uh, now, if you look at the landscape of what is offered via Kubernetes and the projects that have grown out of them, whether they're in the sandbox or incubation or um, you know, graduated, say, there's over 30 products, 30, sorry, 30 projects. Um, and that's, you know, that's really because, you know, this, people identified that this is really the new platform. This thing that is running on top of bare metal or VMs is really 
where you can have consistency in rolling out your applications um, and, and any, of the, any of the systems that you want to run on top of that. That means too, right, you can, it doesn't really matter if you have a cluster on-prem or you have it in a cloud, that experience is pretty much the same across the board, which is probably different than what previous uh, platforms offered you. So I, I think that's, you know, that's really important. And that's what's really kind of also evolved the DevOps landscape of how you know, we set things up in, 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 on a platform. So like I mentioned before, we, you know, there's configuration management. There's a lot of these tools that have evolved. Um, you know, Ansible, CF Engine, um, kind of that's what's current, right? That, I mean, that's what people kind of use today or have been using. Kind of the new stuff around configuration man management is maybe APBs, which is the uh, Ansible playbook bundles. Um, and then monitoring on some of these systems, we used to use Nagios and, and, and Zabbix, and now in the cluster itself, we're using Prometheus to do some of these, th this monitoring. Um, so just as kind of the platform has converged into now we have Kubernetes and OpenShift, which is an application to, it is, is, a, is a platform to run any of our applications that we want, whether it's databases or front ends, back ends for it. Um, some of these tools have also come together. Uh, obviously, I didn't put a current and new on the CI CD tools because I think all of these are still relevant and still evolving. Um, some of these are services and some of these are just straight tools, obviously. Circle CI is, is a service, just like Travis CI is a service. Um, Zool, Jenkins, and, and uh, are, are really more along of tools that you can implement yourself or get maybe some off-the-shelf uh, implementations of them, like in the case of CloudBees is, uh, is the main contributors and, and owners of, of, of Jenkins itself. Uh, Zool is definitely open source and has been, you know, very accepted in the OpenStack community and now is kind of expanding out to other um, facets. So a lot of these things are converging together um, on the platform itself. A lot, of, a lot of companies are making moves now not just to have like a separate CI system that runs, but really uh, more around, you know, how do we actually implement this or integrate this into the platform itself? And that's really what I'm gonna get to when I kind of show my demo and, and we talk about this stuff. Uh, so the one thing I wanted to kind of also point out about Jenkins, right? Jenkins Classic is not cloud native, right? It's not, it's not Kubernetes ready. It's really just, um, you know, a, a Java application that runs. But then it got containerized, which is cool. It's containerized, that's great. But it's still not really cloud native aware, right? It's, it, it, you can't scale it. You can't really, it's not ephemeral in the sense of you could spin that up and spin it down to do a task and it's gone in a pod. On, on OpenShift or Kubernetes. Um, and then it got a little bit more, you know, can we run this in a pod and a little more? And now we're actually, what, what Jenkins and, and CloudBees are doing, part of this evolution, is to make Jenkins more cloud native and more um, available. And there's this thing called Jenkins File Runner. So now you could actually spin up um, a headless Jenkins that's just there for the orchestration to execute Jenkins pipelines um, without having to have that persistent and, and sitting around. You don't have to have storage to back it or do any of that. You can actually collect the logs off of it, um, any of the artifacts, and push them to another location. So that's kind of where CloudBees recognized that Jenkins itself is not really kind of meeting the muster of running on OpenShift or Kubernetes as a platform, so how do they actually um, change that? You, some of you may have heard of Jenkins X, which is actually their complete um, uh, I would say OpenShift or, or Kubernetes cluster solution there that runs on a cluster. Um, and so the other, I think the other interesting thing too, I went to Jenkins World this past year and for the past, I've been there probably the past four or five years, the conference was always called Jenkins World. This is the first year that now it's called Jenkins World and DevOps World. So they're, they're shifting away from Jenkins being their flagship product because they identify that DevOps is, is the space that they want to get to and how do they actually um, enhance that with their products. So it's not just going to be Jenkins and how do they actually run that on top of OpenShift or in their case, probably Kubernetes. So I'm going to talk about some of the, the infrastructure components and tools that we use. So obviously we're on OpenShift, we have this thing called S2I templates, which is just 
a configuration, a YAML configuration of, of a build config to put on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, when I say Kubernetes and OpenShift interchangeable, uh, let's just assume that. Um, and Docker files that we want to load. Uh, in the case of Jenkins, we're using Jenkins for this demo, and that means you have to use Jenkins, but we have shared libraries and pipelines that we also roll out, so it's an optional piece. And then we also have this thing called hooks, where after we actually run the setup here, um, we, we then can do some any post-processing. So what I'm going to show you today in, in the demo, before I get to that, is, is a, a OpenShift instance locally run on Minishift, but this could, the same stuff that I'm showing you could also easily have an OpenShift endpoint that we just apply that to and can roll out these S2Y templates, our containers, any Jenkins pipelines, and run any post, post hooks that we want to after the cluster has been set up. Um, the other thing that our team has worked on is this thing called Contra HDSL, all upstream projects, by the way. Um, and I'll have links at the end of the presentation for that. Um, it's really a simple YAML DSL that is a front end for Jenkins libraries and pipelines. So a lot of people don't want to have to know Jenkins or know pipelines or what that entails. This allows you very easily with some helper containers that we, we, uh, we uh, build in OpenShift and then we deploy at the time when we run a pipeline. Uh, one is called our linchpin executor, which is used in their helper containers, and that's used to provision resources in any cloud. So even if you needed a bare metal machine or a, a VM in AWS or GCE or OpenStack, you could use this mechanism to do that. Um, and then we have an Ansible execu uh, executor container, another helper container that also helps configure that resource once it's been provisioned, executes tests, and then collects logs and artifacts. So a very simple workflow. Um, the pipeline code for that is a little bit more annoying to have to maintain our libraries. So we've kind of handled that for you and used these helper containers to help administer that. Um, and now this is kind of, I'm gonna lay out kind of how all our stuff comes together here. Um, so as you can see, I, I blocked out this future stuff because I'm gonna have that, bring this back up on the future slide of where kind of we're headed with this but I wanted to at least have the whole diagram up here. So whether it's mini shift at the bottom here in, or open shift, whether it's a stage or product and production environment or your local mini shift, you have this one playbook that will set up an, a, a cluster for you. Um, it will, we have a, our Contra NV infra, the, the pink area here that has the future stuff blocked out has our helper containers, any of our metrics containers, which are Influx, DB, and Grafana, um, and all the Jenkins infrastructure already ready to, to deploy and roll out. If you have any pipelines, we have some sample pipelines in this HDSL code here on the left that can be deployed if you so choose. It doesn't have to be. Same for the infrastructure. If you did not want any of these pieces, you can leave that out. And then we come to this yellow stuff on the right side. This is you guys. This is your project that has S2I templates, Docker files, Jenkins pipelines, or any containers that you want to actually build and deploy on the Minishift or OpenShift infrastructure, this allows you to do that. So this kind of lays all that out. Um, Kruno probably is gonna go into a little more detail on some of that, but that kind of shows everything that we're working with uh, across the board. And when I show the demo, um, <clears throat> you'll get to see some of that uh, firsthand. So everything comes down to kind of this, uh, you could do, it's all Ansible based. So you could do the parameters one by one, or you could just generate this kind of file that I, that I have here, this Contra NV setup, which is just uh, a bunch of parameters, which I'll walk through as well. Um, the uh, S2I templates that are in this project, uh, the Docker files and the Jenkins libraries and pipelines, like I, I mentioned before. Um, and this is basically the, the, the structure of the, of the sample project that I did for this, for the conference, which will be available uh, afterwards or in, the, in the references on the slides. Um, so this is that file. Some easy parameters, uh, cleaning up things. Uh, we don't want to run prereqs is really for virtualization, nested virtualization, which we, in this case, we don't care about. I'm going to set up my containers. I'm also going to set up pipelines. I don't want to set up the sample project, uh, and I don't want to modify any of the security context. Uh, I am setting up Minishift here, and uh, my profile's name is Minishift. It can be whatever you want to call it, but for this example and for the demo, that's what I chose. 
Um, and this shows the mini shift version and the open shift version that you're going to use with it, and some basic username and password that um, would be set up. Um, and then the bottom of this file is some of the other stuff. So uh, kernel actually added this feature of whitelist and blacklist. In this case for this demo, I really don't want my helper container, so I'm going to actually leave those off of, of the installation. Um, what that means is that the, uh, the diagram I showed you where the, the infra setup had those helper containers listed there, it will then identify that these two would be ones that we do not deploy or build in the environment at all. Um, and then here's the name of my OpenShift uh, namespace and the project repo that I'm going to be using. Um, you can go to that URL and that, the, all, the, all the stuff that I'm showing you here today is available there. Um, and then just some, some information about the memory and CPUs that I want to provide for my mini shift instance. Um, there are more things down below, but less important, more around the influx DB uh, and uh, Grafana setup, and you can look, look through that as you, as you wish. All right, so we're ready to do a demo. Really, this is the command that I did to kick off the demo. Um, so I just wanted to show that there, and it's in the slides, but let me um, bring the video over. So I'm going to talk through the video. So I just was just some pre-cleanup I did before I ran the demo from scratch. Um, yeah. So I cloned this the Contra NV setup repo, um, and then I also cloned my my project repo, which in this case is the DevConf demo. Um, that's really all you need to get started with this. Um, and at this point now, I'm ready actually to commit to kick off that command line that I just showed you on that demo slide. Well, actually, sorry. We're going to, just so you can see the file that I just showed you um, in the demo. I'll also make this video available after the conference, too. I'm just going to skip through some of this. Oops. Sorry about that. So here's the, the command line that we're kicking off. I just have to put in my password. Um, but that was the same command line. Actually, if I just want to back it up just a bit. Um, so all I did was I provided my user on my system, and then I pointed to that, that uh, setup file. Um, and then I provided the sudo, uh, so it asked me for my password and my SSH password, um, and then we can proceed. So it's going to go through, in my case, it's cleaning up whatever the previous cluster that I had set up there. So we'll do that, too, because I had that run cleanup option. And at this point, it's going to go get the mini shift binary um, and then start actually creating the cluster. So it's going to deploy a mini shift, basically a VM. And then once the VM is up and running, then it actually deploys the version of OpenShift that I want. In this case, it's 3.11. It also pulls down the OC binary, so you can do OC commands as well. So now we're at the point where we already the MiniShift cluster is set up, and now from my project I'm deploying this Fedora image, and that has that is, comes from a Docker file, the S2I template. Um, I'm just going to get the the IP here of the of the actual VM that's running my OpenShift environment, and at this point I've kicked off and I'm waiting for this Fedora container to build, um, so that it's available. But even before that, we can log into the mini shift instance um, and then have a full up and running OpenShift cluster at that point. We can go to our DevConf namespace. There's nothing deployed here yet. Um, but you can see when we go to builds here that we've already built or we're in the process of building the Fedora container that's actually from my project. It's not in the infrastructure pieces. So 
So at this point, um, after it does that first project, Fedora container, it's now going to go to the helper containers, which is the Jenkins master, <coughs> slave, um, and as well as the Grafana and InfluxDB containers as well. We also have a container tools, which has Builda and Podman also part of our helper containers. It also gets rolled out as well. Speed this up. So, I don't want to fast forward too much, but um, so now we're in the process of just finishing up building of these containers. And you can see we just had Fedora before, now all these are either complete or in a running state that they've been deployed to the my mini shift instance. <clears throat> and until those, till the Grafana, since the Grafana, Jenkins, and Influx have deployment configs. Um, after they're built, they get deployed out to the OpenShift instance. And I can show you that too. You can also do, you, since you have OC available, you can also, besides the UI, you can do this on the command line and see the same containers or see the complete setup of everything that's on that cluster at this point. This gives you a full uh, view of that. Sorry about the video choppiness. So now at this point, everything has gotten built, and now we are deploying our, our InfluxDB, Grafana, um, and Jenkins as well. So Jenkins is the last one to come up. Grafana is now deployed, InfluxDB, um, and Jenkins is in the process of the pod coming up, I believe. But we can go to the Grafana UI at this point. It's up and running. And this is all locally on my machine. It's not, it, it could be we could take this whole thing and deploy this and skip the mini shift part and deploy this to an OpenShift cluster. That's perfectly feasible as well. So Jenkins is still coming up. Now all the playbooks have finished running, that full system, and it takes about, if you're deploying mini-shift, um, it takes, could take from anywhere from 15 minutes to, to 20 minutes, something like that. Um, and then once this is deployed, then we'll have a Jenkins instance that we can go to and see. Um, the, the end part of this, now that this is all set up and that's great, now how do we utilize that? So we have a pipeline that we seeded uh, we have a C job that picks up that pipeline file, um, and then it runs basically a stress test to get uh, stress to CPU and memory, and then we can graph that in Grafana. We can put that at InfluxDB, and then Grafana can graph that for us. So that's what I'm going to show here. You just have to do this initial login. Um, so that pipeline's running already. So at this point, what it's doing is Jen Jenkins is saying, OK, I know I have this pod template that has the Fedora 28 um, image. It's built. I want to deploy that and run this metrics.sh test on it to stress my CPU and my, um, my memory. At that point, um, you can get stats from Grafana not only on the metrics of the CPU and memory, but basically how long did it take your build and the pipeline build to complete. What were the, how many were successful, how many failed? You can get the, all that information from there. This just shows, again, the full stack that um, is up and running. Let's go to the cool stuff. So th this is just showing that we're executing this basically every, the timeout is 90, so it runs for 90 seconds um, to do the stress test, uh, and it does it about five times. Um, initially, obviously, the data to show you wasn't that impressive, so actually what I did is I let the system run for over basically almost 48 hours to get more data to show that, um, but I'll show you the initial data that gets put out there in the... So 
So now we can go to Grafana. You can see it's, it's not as exciting because we did like one run basically of this. So we had one build succeed. Um, the one little dot, obviously, in the last hour. But I have another video that kind of shows this running over a period of time. And if the network permits, we could also show this a little bit live, too. So let me go to, so this is the second video here. Um, this shows that we've run 50 builds now. So now we have more, more of a data set to show. You could see, based on the last 24 hours of what was stressed out in the CPU and the memory, we have also to show the sample pipeline and how many runs we've run through that. 49, we're on the 50th right now. <coughs> and we can show the 24-hour view of what that looks like. Um, and then that kind of gives you a, also an idea of like how long did it take your builds to run? Was it faster during certain parts of the day? But this just shows a sample of what you can do with it. Your project may, be, may have a different um, target or a different goal. This is what our target was, just to show you kind of how all this stuff wraps together um, and using the different components, all running inside the new platform, which is OpenShift and, and Kubernetes. Pause that. I do have another demo to show of, of um, of uh, Jacob's file runner and how he set all that up, but I'll, I'll leave that if we have time at the end for that. So that was basically the demo um, of, of how all this comes together. It's all maintained in two repos, the Contra and V setup being the main repo, um, and then there was your, it would be your project repo. In this case, I had a sample project to set up. So the future, what does the future look like? Obviously, I, I mentioned APBs, and that's sort of future. It, it's good for, um, it, it's really good for deploying uh, configuration in, in OpenShift. It's not really for maintaining the life cycle of it. That's kind of where you get into Helm charts or operators. Um, you know, it's really a tool for, I would say, Helm is a, is a tool for managing packages um, called charts, in, 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 and, it, and it provides the following. Um, there, are th there are three important concepts here. The, the chart, it builds information necessary to create an instance of, Kubernetes, of a Kubernetes application. So it, it keeps, it's basically a builder or a packager for your Kubernetes application that's going to run. Um, and then we get to operators. So operators is a little bit more involved. Um, it's really a method of packaging, deploying, and managing the complete life cycle of your Kubernetes application. Um, you know, it's, it also it maintains its life cycle, so as you make changes, your operator will then control whether you know, something gets redeployed or something is, 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 is torn down, or it basically is like almost self-healing of, of an application in, in that sense, and it just manages it. It's kind of software to manage software in, in that sense. It's what it's been called. And then we get to kind of one of the new kids on the block, uh, which is Knative, um, which is really kind of, um, it really extends the Kubernetes API, it provides a set of um, middleware components um, that are essential to build applications. Uh, you know, by having serving, which is, you might have heard of serverless, that you can deploy an application um, on the fly uh, via, via a CRD. Um, eventing, and the kind of part that comes back to CI and CD is really the build pipeline. So they actually have um, a component of this that is, is, may fill in some of the gaps or take over some of the things that Jenkins does that could be just native to actually Kubernetes itself. Um, so these are, this is actually Knative is an upstream project. You know, I, I recommend checking it out. I have links at the, in the end of the presentation. You can contribute to it. Um, I would say the, the key thing, too, it's, a, it's a, just like source to image is OpenShift's version of taking source code and building an application out of it. This is a kind of a, an, another way to do that and probably more upstream than, than even S2i is at this point, or more widely used than S2i will be. Um, so like I said, going back and kind of talking about Knative, this is kind of the setup. It does require, if you're using serverless, 
for serving and eventing, you need Istio as, as the mesh. Um, you, it is source centric um, and to deploy, deploy container based applications. It can run anywhere. So any of the things that we're showing you, the platform OpenShift for Kubernetes, we can run this either cloud, third party data centers or, or on-prem. Um, and the idea too around the Knative stuff is to identify similar application patterns to deploy your application um, and really codify those, those best practices. Um, so kind of round out the future of what we showed before is like today we have S2I templates, uh, Docker files, and Jacob shared libraries, which is, which is great. But now as we look towards the future of other things that we could deploy as part of the setup that I showed you, this, this infrastructure, we could use APBs, you could set up Helm charts, uh, the Knative templates are available, or even operators. So to kind of show that box now is part of our infrastructure, we would have maybe we would deploy operators for ourselves that are help um, the infrastructure as well as Knative templates, or maybe your project also has some of these projects, uh, these operators, as well as Knative templates to use as well. The idea is that we want to make this platform um, flexible and that we can keep adding into it. You can deploy your own, um, your own pieces into it. All you really need is the OpenShift platform with uh, some, some Ansible post hooks to actually do, to do any extra stuff that you want to do after you've deployed it. Um, so that's, that's my links. I think we do have really only halfway through. So I do have some time to show you that other demo. And now, then we'll open it up for Q&A. So I wrote this script that basically pulls down the Jenkins file runner repo, um, builds the war file, or sorry, uh, builds the, the package, the Jenkins file runner jar. Um, and then at that point, I can pull down the latest war file that exists from Jenkins, and I can insert my, inject my own plugins that I want into that, and then I can actually <coughs> um, run a Jenkins pipeline, which you'll see at the end of this. This is just kind of um, doing some of the install. Here we are pulling down the WAR file. Um, that was just a building of Jenkins file runner, and now we'll pull down the WAR file, and then you'll see also how we inject the plugins into the system. So at this point, we it had a list of plugins, and now we're actually installing this inside that uh, in Jenkins home directory. Let's see. So this is the file at the end. Um, we're basically, this is what you would usually do in Jenkins, is Jenkins file runner command, is we're pointing to the home directory of Jenkins that we've built the plugins, where the plugins are at, and then executing our Jenkins file. So that was basically it. We did an LS of just a shell step in a, in a Jenkins pipeline, and we were able to run that. So, Instead of having a full-blown Jenkins with the UI and all of its other persistent stuff that you need, you can actually run um, Jenkins right from the command line with a Jenkins file runner. And I just wanted to kind of show that the kind of where Jenkins is, CloudBees is headed with Jenkins in that, in that case. And there's the, the pipeline file itself. And that's it. So I'll open it up, any, any questions? Um, about what I presented. I know I covered a lot, and we can go back through anything that you need. Any, any questions? None. We're so impressed. Go ahead. <laughs> so you run, you run Jenkins on your web? Yeah. Oh, the Jenkins file runner? Or you, no. oh, when I was showing? Um, the, the base is... Um, is actually the, the it, it's the OpenShift Jenkins that, that's available upstream. Yeah. I don't think that's Fedora-based, though. 
Minishift is the overall platform running on. We're deploying a container that Jenkins is, is running on, which is based on OpenShift's version of that. Um, that. That basically is what allows us to configure, configure Jenkins with any globals we want to set up, any of the plugins, all that stuff. So the same stuff I showed you with the Jenkins file runner of installing those plugins, it, uh, OpenShift uses the same mechanism with the S2Y templating to do that. Any other questions? Anything? Yep. So the question is, can, can, we, can you have an Amazon, uh, a, a Kubernetes cluster on Amazon? Is that what you mean? Or, or, or yeah. We, we could provision a cluster in Amazon um, th through this, or we could talk to an existing cluster. Um, we kind of focused on OpenShift or MiniShift, which is probably a little different than this the vanilla Kubernetes cluster. But there's no reason why you could not build an OpenShift cluster in, um, in AWS as well. Because as you hear, I, I, use, I use OKD, which is the open source version of OpenShift anyway. Yeah? Just the yellow part, which is... Yeah, exactly. Monitoring for the yellow part, can you, is it intended to use the Grafana here, or is it only for Jenkins, the one you have here? In this case, I only, it's set up tie, tied to Jenkins, um, but there's no reason if you knew how to do it some other way, or you just wanted to set up Grafana and InfluxDB, you could deploy those templates your own way um, using our mechanism here, but it would be in your project, and you can configure that any way you want. Other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it.